and welcome to Tuesday. It's time for the book stack and what we've got. So let's get started. I moved further back from the camera. Um, I can scoot a little closer forward. I've been getting a little better at these videos. I've got a new microphone coming. So we did have our service provider out in the neighborhood. Apparently audio and video quality is really diminished because of everybody's on the computer apparently in my neighborhood obviously at home staying safe so once again a shout out to project books inc i will link them in this video so please go like their page and again message me if there's a genre you're looking for the books change every day and um i need to ship them out in fact i've got a stack probably a good box right here right now that needs to go so today's stack kind of seemed to have a common theme. I don't know if they'd gotten sorted prior to me um, picking, you know, getting them. But again, I just need to pass these on to people that need to read. But um, I am going to give a quick plug for a travel book because that's what I'm really most passionate about. And today's travel book, I'll try to feature one each day. This one's like brand new. Looks like it's barely been opened. It's all about history of Egypt. So a lot of great information about Egypt with photos, with pictures, you know, everything you might be curious about learning about Egypt. So that's my travel book that's ready to go out. So let me know, media mail is really affordable and I'm trying to ship once or twice a week, but I'm going to the post office this afternoon. So let me know. Next up, the book is called The Marshal and the Murderer. So something I don't need to read any, um, just my personal style, I'm not big into murder, but I know many of these are interesting, riveting stories and, and takes you to a different location. This one, oh, this one sounds almost like it was um, pulled out of the headlines when you read the back, if any of what, if you were around years ago you'll know what i'm referring to it's in the mystery and fiction category it says a young swiss art student is reported missing by her roommate she commuted by bus to a studio in a village near florence to learn pottery making when her body is found it is assumed that the motive for the murder was sex but marshall guarnaccia and i might be mispronouncing it of the Carabineria has a different suspicion. So there's apparently a whole series of these, um, a Marshall Grunicaria investigation, and it takes place in Italy. It's, um, it's about, you know, 200 pages, so probably a fairly easy read, uh, no photos, but there's others by this author, but this one's available. This one's fairly lightweight, so it wouldn't cost much for the media mail shipping anywhere in the United States. Next up is one called The Christ Commission, and the author is Og Mandino, if anyone's familiar with this one, I'm not. He's, um, he's also, oh, this is why his name is familiar. So also the novel of the greatest salesman in the world, and the greatest miracle in the world. So it would be, all right, inside says, it would be the detective mystery to end all detective mysteries, Johnny Carson exclaimed to Matt Lawrence during his guest appearance on The Tonight Show. Lawrence, the world's foremost mystery writer, had been describing a book he'd been writing for years, a fictional inquiry by a commission of three Roman tribunes in AD 36 into the truth concerning Christ's alleged resurrection. Why haven't you finished it? Johnny Carson asked. Matt sighed to a shocked audience that the more he researched, the more his doubts had grown that Jesus had ever risen from the dead. And since he could not bring himself to write an antichrist book, he had abandoned the project and continued writing his popular mysteries instead. Still, he admitted gamely, if he could travel backward in time to that period following Christ's death, he was certain that with his investigative, investigative skills, he could discover what had really happened to the body. Before the night was over, 
Macron had his wish, and in ancient Jerusalem, among the enemies and followers of Jesus, he was able to uncover the truth in a dramatic and wondrous conclusion that will touch the hearts of believers and non-believers alike. Three of Og Mandino's books, The Greatest Salesman in the World, The Greatest Secret in the World, and The Greatest Miracle in the World, have already earned him worldwide acclaim with more than 8 million copies sold in 17 languages. Work on the Christ Commission began long before any of his seven other books were published. But time and time again, he put the manuscript aside because he did not feel equal to the unusual challenge it presented. So this is the book. It is hardcover. It's in great condition. So again, message me and I'll get this sent out to your media mail. Kind of a timely topic with Easter coming up this weekend. Next up is something more light. It is it's all for the golfers, chicken soup for the golfer soul. And it's for anyone who shares a love of the links. What amazes me about some of the golf courses is how beautiful they are. They're in beautiful locations. I've gone to a couple different golf courses over the course of the last few years of my travels. Um, so this is, if anyone's familiar with the Chicken Soup series, they're a collection of stories. Um, I'm never sure if they're by, I think they're by different authors. Yeah, this one's by, let's see. Yeah, it's got a bunch of different authors in here. Each story will touch your heart in some way. Keep and read this book that celebrates the game of golf in an uplifting and positive manner. It should be required reading for all golfers. And that's a quote from Jim Colbert, senior PGA Tour player. So if anyone loves golf, this would be a great book maybe to pick up and enjoy. Sit down, sit outside on a nice day since um, I understand a lot of the golf courses are currently closed. Maybe if you got a backyard golfer, they can sit and take a reader to this. All right, next book is a novel, and it's called Triangles. It's got kind of a sexy cover, so it says it's absorbing on the back. Three female friends face midlife crises in number one New York Times bestselling author Ellen Hopkins. No holds bar exploration of sex, marriage, and the fragility of life. Holly is filled with regret after 18 years at home with her three children. She sheds 60 pounds and loses herself in the world of extramarital sex. Andrea is a single mom watching her friend Holly's meltdown with a mixture of concern and contempt. Holly is throwing away what Andrea has spent her whole life searching for. So what if she picks up Holly's castaway husband? Marissa has more than her fair share of challenges, a gay, rebellious teenage son, a terminally ill daughter, and a husband who buries himself in his work. As one woman's marriage unravels, another's rekindles. As one woman's family comes apart at the seams, another's reconfigures into something bigger and better. In this story of connections and disconnections, one woman's ups and downs is another one's downs, and all of them will learn the meaning of friendship, betrayal, and forgiveness. Um, so it's by Ellen Hopkins. Sounds like a pretty riveting book. And it's a paperback. It's got um, some poetry in the back, it looks like. It's like an interesting layout to the way the pages are. Um, you can see. Yeah, it's really... An interesting, almost like a collection of poems in a way, just the way the text is laid out on the pages. So interesting the way that that's laid out. Um, I don't know. So maybe you're familiar with the work of Ellen Hopkins. Like I said, I can media mail ship it out today. Just drop me a message. Next up is called The Gods of Gotham. Like I said, kind of a similarity when I pulled up the stack. Uh, gods, Christ, all kinds of things. This one says 1845, New York City forms its first police force. The Great Potato Famine hits Ireland, and these two events forever change New York City. Timothy Wilde tends bar, saving every dollar in hopes of winning the girl of his dreams. 
But when his dreams are destroyed by a fire that devastates downtown Manhattan, he is left with little choice but to accept a job in the newly minted New York City Police Department. Returning from his rounds one night, Tim collides with a girl no more than 10 years old, covered in blood. She claims that dozens of bodies are buried in the forest north of 23rd Street. Timothy isn't sure whether to believe her, but as the image of a brutal killer is slowly revealed, an anti-Irish rage infects the city. The reluctant copper star is engaged in a battle that may cost him everything. So this is The Gods of Gotham. The author is Lindsay Fay. And um, I'm not sure if there's any information about Lindsay. Um, just look here briefly. She's the author of Dust and Shadow and was featured in the Best American Mystery Stories in 2010. Faye, a true New Yorker in the sense that she was born elsewhere, lives in Manhattan with her husband, Gabriel. So, ready to ship out. Just something to read. Next one, like I said, there's a theme a little bit here. This one also, God's, this one's God's Hammer. Almost looks like an Irish, you know, again, that area of the world, maybe. Eric Schumacher. Um, 935 AD, the North is in turmoil. Harold Fairhair, Norway's greatest king, has died, leaving his high seat to his murderous son, Eric. To solidify his claim, Eric ruthlessly disposes of all opponents to his throne, save one. Eric's surviving enemies send a ship to England, where Hakon, Eric's youngest brother, is being fostered in the Christian court of King Athelstan. Unable to avoid his fate, Hakon leaves the comforts of the English court to face his ruthless brother in the north. Armed with his dream of becoming Norway's first Christian king, yet confronted with the limitations of his youth and the hostility of the pagans he would rule, Hagen Haraldsson discovers that true victory over Eric might come only by sacrificing that which he holds most dear, his ideals. So here's a read, um, the past, Looks like it's signed by the author inside. So that looks like it matches the signature of the author. So a signed copy. And last, oh, this one's heavy, really heavy. Um, this one's Ken Follett, The Pillars of the Earth. Again, looks like kind of a, literally a heavy read. It's from Oprah's Book Club, a selection she has. It is, doesn't it, it's an extraordinary epic, buttressed by suspense. A mystifying puzzle involving the execution of an innocent man, the erection of a magnificent cathedral, romance, rivalry, and spectacle. The Pillars of the Earth tells the story of Philip, prior of Kingsbridge, a devout and resourceful monk driven to build the greatest Gothic cathedral the world has known, of Tom, the mason who, de who becomes his architect, a man divided in his soul, of the beautiful, elusive Lady Aliana, haunted by a secret shame, and of a struggle between good and evil that will turn church against state and brother against brother. So it looks like a very long read, but for someone that needs some diversion, um, it looks almost like there's, this one's part three, 1140. It's got some um, pictures, some drawings. It kind of reminds me, this inside interior uh, portrait, uh, picture drawing reminds me of some abbeys I came across in my travels in Scotland. And this is kind of actually what's left of them now. There's part four. It's like a little bit more of the interior. It says it's crammed with characters, unbelievably alive, a great, again, across the great gulf of centuries, touches all human emotion. So what a pretty big, pretty thick read, but for someone who would like it, maybe a mail shift for them, please message me and let me get these books to you. So have a wonderful Tuesday and stay tuned. I'll try to, I've been trying to do one of these videos each day 
and find new homes, new hands, new eyes to enjoy these books. So take care, have a wonderful day.